So, um, I talk about uh, projectile motion again today. What's the projectile motion? <coughs> I will uh, try to resist the urge to throw things at you, but that would illustrate it. Um, again, basically, it's projectile motion if we neglect all other influences except for gravity. Um, the object keeps going on the basis of its initial, uh, say, inertia, its initial motion, and then it just falls back to Earth under the acceleration of gravity. Uh, so this is projectile motion. So an important example of that is the, uh, well, let's, I'm going to show you a derivation uh, to derive the range equation. Okay, what's the range equation? Well, here we take a particularly simple case. All right, so I, um, I fire a projectile from basically the ground, and then the thing goes up, and then it comes back down, and it hits the same level that it started at. That's a pretty special case, beginning and ending height being the same. And Okay, so we, we want to figure out what that distance is. Oops. All right. So here's your initial speed v naught at angle theta. All right, and what we'd like to figure out is, is what, what is this distance here? We'll call r the range. Okay, so the way we do this is just to solve the kinematic equations. Let's do that. So to start with, you should notice that v naught x is v naught cosine theta. The initial y velocity, v naught y, um, is v naught sine theta. Um, for our convenience, I'm going to say that this is x equals to x naught equals to y naught equals to zero. I'm going to put the origin at the initial point in the flight. Um, you say, well, how can you do that? Well, simple reason. I mean, I control the horizontal and I control the vertical, so I can put the origin wherever I want. Coordinates are my my tool. I own the coordinates. They don't own me. <coughs> now, when you're working a given problem, you may or may not have that flexibility, right? Somebody tells you the origin is somewhere, you're stuck with it, right? difference between working for yourself and working for someone else. If you work for yourself, you put the origin wherever you want. Of course, there may, there may, may be nowhere else to go. <laughs> All right, I will try to resist the urge to listen to what you're saying. All right, so um, it's probably more interesting than what I'm saying, but that's fine. Let's see here. So x is equal to what? Um, well, it is equal to v naught x times t, right? because there's no acceleration in the x direction. But in this case, it is the rather, I was about to say boring, but actually it's really interesting. V cosine theta times time. <coughs> so there you go. That's the x position. Now y, on the other hand, is v naught y times time minus 1 half gt squared. Right? Um, of course, we can write that in terms of cosine and sine, in this case, sine theta, right? So that's v naught sine theta times time minus 1 half gt squared. All right, so those are the kinematic equations here because we have acceleration of minus g in the y direction and 0x acceleration, right? <laughs> so Okay, various ways to solve this problem. Um, one obvious way is to just figure out the range, to figure out the range, we need to figure out when the bullet comes over here and hits, right? So what, what time is that? What can you say about y at that place? Y yeah, y equals zero at that event. So how do you, how do you find which time that is? Simply set the y equation equal to zero, right? So we'll set y equals to zero. We find flight time. 
t. Okay, so that gives me what? V naught sine theta t minus one half g t squared equals to zero. How do you solve quadratic equations? There, there are two answers to give here. Quadratic formula is usually a good answer. It's pretty much easier to just divide out a t. <coughs> divide out a t. That makes math professor nervous. <laughs> Factor out a t. Yes. <laughs> what he said was not wrong. I mean, if you divide out the t, that's fine. But um, then you'll lose t equals zero. Right? What is t equals zero? starting point, right? You know that's also going to be a solution to this equation. Nobody told the equation which is the start and which is the end, right? It, it really can't tell the difference between the two, so it's going to find both. We do the math. Anyway, here it is. So t times v naught sine theta. I'm just trying to tell you a cautionary tale. Whenever you divide by something, worry about being zero. Otherwise, you may miss out on part of the story. Nice factor out of t. And then, of course, you can see we have two solutions, right? t equals to 0, or what? I'm going to solve this for t. When this is 0, what do we get? t equals to what? v naught sine theta over 2 v naught sine theta. Yeah, v naught sine theta divided by g over 2. Which, yes, you could write as 2 v naught sine theta over g. All right. Now what? So to find the range, I just need to take that time of flight and plug it back into the x equation, right? So let's do that. So we've got x. So the range is equal to x of the time of flight, which is what we just had up here. So that's equal to v naught cosine of theta, parentheses, times this time, which is 2 v naught sine theta <coughs> over g. And there you go. This is v naught squared sine 2 theta divided by g. I will remind you there's this thing called the trig identity, which we happen to know, which says that 2 sine theta cosine theta is in fact sine of 2 theta. If you didn't know that, and you're an engineer, you probably should learn it. <laughs> or at some point, someone will mock you for it. I'll try not to be that person. I'm on the cusp. I'm resisting. Just do it. I think I already did. So <clears throat> R is equal to then uh, V naught L squared sine V theta over G. There we go. That is our beloved range equation. How about the max height here? We derived that last time, yeah? Set the uh, derivative to zero. The, yeah, set the derivative, set dy dt equal to zero. Right. So to find, to find um, height zenith, right, of the, of, the, of the height of the motion, you look for dy dt equal to zero. Well, dy dt being zero, of course, gives me v naught sine theta um, minus gt equals to zero. Um, so the time to the top is, of course, v naught sine theta divided by g. Or, no, t top. Okay. Yeah, of And so what, how do you find that? You figure out the top. Well, you just plug that 5 into the y equation, right? So if you'll allow me to take this, right, and plug it in here and here, and then out pops this. I'm going to do some math in my head. We did this last time anyway, so I don't want to belabor it. 
The first term gives me v naught squared sine squared theta divided by g. The second term gives me minus one half um, g times v naught squared sine squared theta divided by g squared. g over g squared is just one over g, so we get one minus a half anyway. In math, you get v naught squared sine squared theta divided by 2g. So the range formula and the maximum height formula, they're similar, right? But they're definitely different, right? I mean, they're, don't, don't, don't mistake the two. I mean, they're, they're, their meaning is quite different, right? How far does the thing travel horizontally versus what's its maximum vertical displacement? Let's work an example. So suppose you fire a cannon at uh, 30 degrees elevation with a muzzle velocity v naught of, yeah, no, 500 meters per second. Um, does this clear a um, 1,000 meter uh, mountain? kilometers away are you safe? I mean from the cannon. <laughs> so are we assuming that the mountain is positioned underneath the maximum height? I didn't say anything. So the cannon could be put the right I didn't say where the mountain was. It could be right in front of the cannon. Yeah. I mean there's definitely some scenarios you can think of where it definitely won't clear it. Me 22,092? Yep. Okay, so. Or if you like, 22.09 kilometers is the range. So we can answer for sure 
that the answer to the question, if you're 100 kilometers, kilometers away from the cannon, are you safe? Yes, you're safe. Not from the explosion? Not from the... <laughs> it would be very impressive. <laughs> and it would also be very dangerous <laughs> to, fire, to fire artillery shells which damaged 80 kilometers away. <laughs> and, and, you know, something, something, so that means like I'm 80 kilometers away from that, right? So if this exploding bullet hits me, it also hits the cannon, right? Exactly. You're just trying to oh, it's like it's a forward directional <laughs> bullet? I don't know. Um, that's, that's, that's what? That's about, uh, is that what, like 12 miles, something like that? <laughs> oh, I'm wrong. 13, so this is about 13.73 um, 13 miles. These um these figures I just gave you in terms of like angle and and speed that's actually possible. I mean there are guns that shoot things like that. I mean if you have naval guns. They'll shoot, shoot shells at a couple thousand meters per second. I mean, they can shell stuff 30, 40 miles away. Um, it's, and, and the shells they shoot are the size of like small cars. You don't really want to be near where that's going. <laughs> 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 you got to worry about What I've got here, 500 square, multiply by, sine of 30 is what? Jeez, it's a half. So this is a fourth, that's an eighth, so divide by eight. Divide by 9.8. Ugh, fraction. <laughs> I have three one eight eight point eight meters. So I feel like three point one eight nine kilometers straight up. Does this clear a thousand meter mountain? Now you're right. That depends on where the mountain is relative to the to the cannon fire. Yes, it's possible, certainly possible. It depends on whether or not we can move mountains. Of course, we're at liberty to move. So there's, there's, there's the interesting answer in the affirmative, which is when the mountain is actually under the uh, motion of the projectile, right? So you can put your little shrinky dink thousand meter mountain up in here somewhere. Over to here. Anywhere in here will do. I think I just drew it too big. Oh well, this was supposed to be three times as tall as that, right? <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, of course, there are, there, are, there are two like annoying ways you can answer this question to abuse my lack of specificity. It's a shirt. Bounds over here. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> another, obvious, another obvious choice to exploit my wording. <laughs> Put it over there. Also, the about to say, of course. Although, 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 are you from Although, I would remind you guys, I did use the words clear here. And I don't know if it's a reasonable interpretation of my wording to put the mountain here or here. It's supposed to clear a thousand meter mountain. What if you shoot from another thousand meter mountain? What's that? Yes, sir. You didn't tell us how long the cannonball is in Ah, how wide the cannonball is. <laughs> See? Yes. I was just saying, no, the mountain's right in front of the cannon. No, but yes. I mean, that is the freedom that the. Uh, Anyway, I'll, I'll try to ask. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, see if I can ask the question. Who holds the drive? Who holds the drive? Who holds the drive? All right. Okay. <laughs> 
um, which is So here's maybe a better question. Remains to be seen. Um, got uh, Mr. Top Hat here. Um, dinosaur. He has a time machine. So, um, <laughs> Mr. Top Hat, <laughs> basketball. Let's say uh, 20 meters per second at an angle of, I don't know, if you want 50 degrees. All right. Uh, this picture is not necessarily a scale. <laughs> uh, let's say that Mr. Top Hat at the moment has a height of, oh, I don't know, five meters. So he shoots it from five meters. Why not? It's equal to five meters. Um, let's say your handy dandy dinosaur over here has a height of, oh, I don't know. Six feet. I don't really want to choose the height yet. I want to make it interesting. Let's say not going to 20. Let's say 20 meters. <laughs> All right, and and let's also say that this uh, this this here this here dinosaur is a distance of gee I don't know. Um, what's interesting? 100 meters. 100 meters not interesting. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll say 20. We'll say 25 meters from the uh, from the dude, and he's trying to shoot this. Uh, he's, he's he's shooting at this uh, this basketball hoop over here, and um, let's agree that it's a magical basketball hoop. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's really smart, and the hoop can raise up and down as, as it wants to. So basically, if the ball even gets to here, no bouncing. <laughs> if the ball crosses the line. <laughs> Shot it in, right? Wait, can the basketball hoop only go up and down? Yes, you can. Up and down. Why can't it go forward and back? Yeah. Why it's magical. 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 It's Probably should draw that one. Yeah. All right, so then the question obviously is Does the basketball clear the dinosaur? How far away is the hoop? Oh, that's also a good question. Let's say that this is 75 meters. Yeah, so there are a couple of obvious questions that we like to answer for this kind of setup, right? Number one, does the basketball clear the dinosaur? Number two, is it even possible if the dinosaur wasn't there? No bouncing for the ball to get to the hoop, right? That question is easily answered with the range equation, sort of. Why not? And it's not quite. What does the range equation tell you? Oh, it's same level, right? This doesn't have the same level as this necessarily. I mean, it wouldn't. If the um, if the range was less than a, if, the, if the range was more than 100 meters, okay, it would tell us to hit, right? But if the range was um, like less than 100 meters, it might be the case that you know the ball um, would actually get there in the in the remaining time it has to fall down. Let me just work it out from. Okay, so um, <clears throat> what's v not x? <coughs> 20 meters per second, right? Cosine of 50 degrees. 
Me not why is what? 20 meters per second times the sine of 50 degrees, whatever it is. So I got 12.856, 12.856. Second. If I'm going to keep four digits in my answer, it's a good idea to calculate the five digits as a, as a point of order. So sine of 50 times 20, I get 15.321 meters per second. All right. So what's my x? x is equal to x of time t, right? Is Oh, what do you want to make x equal to zero? It's our choice. X equals zero. X equals zero, is it x equals zero? That seems safe to say. Where? At word on the We're in the x. Exactly. That's, I mean, anything else would almost be wrong. I mean, it would just be a choice, but. Okay, so 12.856. Times t, there's your x position, right? Um, and before we even go on, we can find the time to the dinosaur, right? How? Just set x equal to what? 25, right? So 25 is equal to 12.856t. So therefore, t to the dinosaur. <coughs> One point nine four five. Fine, I'll keep one more digit in there. Nine point one point nine four four six. I'm trying to be careful. All right. Um, and then, okay, how about y of t? What's y of t equal to? And the big difference between this and the range derivation we just did is that it has an initial height, which is not zero. Five meters. That, that's a big difference in terms of like symmetries of the problem. So I get five plus 15.321 t minus 4.9 t squared. Why 4.9? 4.9 is 9.8 divided by 2. So that's the 1 half gt squared term. Would it just be easier to like, um, say the time, like in the beginning, and then cut everything down now? Like say the dinosaur is like 15 meters high, and then this would pop at, like starts at zero with the balls turn. Well, that'd be easier. I mean, like I, setting like the uh, origin equal to Mr. Topette's head. Oh, you're saying set the, well, yeah. that's, I mean, I made a choice, I'm going to stick with it. You could redefine y equal to zero to be the place where it was released, but that doesn't change the question, it doesn't change the fact that I'm asking you a question that involves y equals to minus five, given your choice. You've got to face the music somewhere. The fact that the beginning height and the final height is possibly not the same means that you can't just naively use the range equation without thinking. The range equation only dispatches questions which are exactly the same starting and and finishing height without further thought. Other questions you have to get into the equations in general. Like this one. So <clears throat> it's not an artifact of my presentation here, it's, it's an intrinsic feature of this problem that you have to work out the equations. Um, okay, so there's your y for arbitrary time. What time are we interested in? Dino time, that's right. Okay, so y of y of dino time is what? Um, five plus fifteen point three two one times one point nine four four six. Probably can get away with less decimals. Oh well, um, nine four point nine times one point nine four four six squared. Okay, which is what? Would, would you have 16.264? 16.264 meters. Right. That, of course, is that is less 
than 20 meters, right? So that means it, it hits the dinosaur. It does not clear the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, to make the question interesting then, um, you know, send the dinosaur into another dimension, but it's in code. <laughs> and then what's the what's the range of this? Well, excuse me. How um, when is it? Um, here, let me draw a picture. So the trajectory looks something like this. Yeah. Actually, I don't know where this point is. I don't know if it's here or if it's here. I don't know. Okay. How can we figure out where it would hit? Ignoring the dinosaur, where would it hit? We would solve what? Solve, solve y equals zero to find when it hits. Right? Now, that math we did in the derivation of the range equation isn't going to happen here. Um, I will no longer dismiss your suggestion to use the quadratic equation. I will embrace it. Because now we face the problem 5 plus 15.3 e, sorry, maybe. Um, minus 4.9 t squared, and just abbreviating the decibels as to make my life easier. Sorry, guys. Forgive me. Um, so how do you solve that? I think quadratic formula is way to go. So this gives me t is equal to minus 15.3 plus or minus the square root of like 15.3 squared plus 4 times 4.9 times 5 minus minus gives me a plus inside that, that, that radical. And I get to divide by um, 2 times the coefficient of t squared, which happens to be like minus 9.8. Right? solver in your handy dandy handle scientific calculator might be worthwhile. For me, I go, what do I do? Oh, there you go. Hey, come on, get out of there. Now I'm stuck in this thing. Let me out. So I hit mode and I go five, which is equation. And then it gives me a list of equations. I hit three, that's quadratic. And then I just have to give the A, the B, and the C, and it gives me a solution. Or you can calculate the square roots. Much to your own peril. <laughs> I don't know, one way or the other, you guys need to find a reliable, safe way of calculating solutions to quadratic equations. That's a big part of physics, sorry. I mean, this kind of physics. Um, OK, so that's the time. And then how do you figure out the range? Then the actual range here would be 12.856 times that time. We want the positive one, right? What does that give us? Yeah, no work close. How do I get out of this thing? Ah! I'm stuck in this weird mode. I guess that's a hit mode and hit mode one. Thank you. Your 12.5 point five eight six. That would be very terrifying to test by the Although it would probably be a dream, but that doesn't take that much anymore. 
Let's see, 43. Point nine seven, but that's probably not justified. But anyway, something like that. So no, it definitely doesn't reach the basketball hoop. <laughs> Questions? Now, you can pick at my wording, and that's fine. That's your prerogative. I mean, that's your right as a student to make fun of my wording. I don't, I, don't, I don't deny you that privilege. Um, but it'd probably be good for us to look at an example or two that I already have written out. And the wording's not my own, so it's probably safe. Okay. <clears throat> Do you guys have a test? No. Oh, yeah, next, 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 Thursday. next Thursday or Friday, depending on who you are. Um, for the sake of the camera, could you guys hit the lights? Um, we're going to look at um, we're, we're in projectile motion right now, right? So projectile motion. some general stuff. We derived these things today, right? Um, that's a more interesting version of, well, actually, this is a little bit different. Let's talk about this for a minute. Suppose you have a cannon fired between 0 and 90 degrees with a speed of V naught, and uh, you're on a horizontal plane, and it fires from the level of the plane, all right? But to actually make that happen, you need to dig a hole in the ground, right? such that the muzzle is level with the ground. We can usually ignore this, though, because like the cannon's height is pretty insignificant compared to the general motion, right? So the range equation is very close to being true, even though technically maybe you're not hitting something at the same level that you're launching it from, right? Um, can we just go ahead and assume this is an airplane? An airplane? No, it's a horizontal plane. Like geometric plane. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know what I can do with you guys. Okay, so we have derived this general range formula, right? So to figure out the angle that maximizes it, what you do is differentiate with respect to theta and set that equal to zero to find the critical angle. So in this case, that differ differentiate sine, I get cosine. So I have to solve this cosine 2 theta equal to zero. Um, well, that means that 2 theta has to be 90 degrees, right? Which means theta has to be 45 degrees. I mean, okay, there's many other solutions to this, but the only solutions which fall in the range of 0 to 90 are 45. I guess then you should technically check the other two extremes, which are what? 0 degrees, 90 degrees. Either one of those is not really a very good idea for a cannon, right? You shoot at 0 degrees, it's not good. And 90 degrees, it, well, you have longer to think about your life, but it's still not good. <laughs> so this is the interesting solution to cosine 2 theta equal to 0. 45 degrees, so that's, and that's what you guys know, right? 45 degrees gives you maximum range. That's only true if your initial and final heights are the same. If you're shooting from this height and to aim at something that's like up here, right? Um, I got this. If you're shooting from this height to something that's like this height, but it can be here or here, you know, for a given fixed velocity, what angle maximizes the distance? It doesn't have to be 45 degrees, right? So, I'll show you an example here. Uh, comparing Earth to Moon, who cares about that? Here's an interesting problem. No, not the one I want to show you today, but that's okay. We still have a few more minutes. <coughs> so suppose you're shooting a gun or maybe you're throwing cats at a particular velocity <laughs> off the top of a building. I mean, whatever you're supposed to go. Cat cannon. Cat cannon. There is 
cats can't fit in a t-shirt cannon. I'm, I'm sorry, did that not clarify it? <laughs> well, <laughs> those kittens. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That depends on how creative you are. That there are. <laughs> they're evil kittens. <laughs> they're going to grow up. What do cats, up they what they cats do to score in your life? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the question. Are too well, here's the claim. Show that the speed at which the ball hits the ground is independent of theta. So if I if I pick cats and I throw one 10 meters per second up like that, <laughs> and if I throw one 10 meters per second straight like that, or if I take one and I just chuck it down 10 meters per second, whatever I do, when it hits the ground, they're going at the same speed. It doesn't, doesn't seem this. quite right, right? I mean, I, my intuition is that if I throw it up, somehow that should like make it hit s slower, but that's not true because, of course, what comes up, up and down. And, well, let's see why. It's actually kind of a pain to work it out in our current technology. So what we're saying is a kinematic equation, um, and I just plug in, you know, the... Um, <coughs> The solution of y equal to zero. And here, um, actually, I'm solving for the time it hits zero, which is this. You got your plus solution, your minus solution. And then I plug that in um, to the velocity formula um, at the plus solution. It gives me this, right? But the x velocity is constant, just mean not cosine beta. So to find the speed, how do you find the speed? If I have v, is dx dy, what's the speed? The speed is the magnitude of the velocity. It's the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, right? I mean, we haven't been doing much with that. But I can still, I mean, that's still something you know about, and we can ask about that, too. Here's an example we're doing. And something magical happens, right? When you take this, the x component squared plus the y component squared at the time it hits the ground, sine squared equals cosine squared, Make that go away, and you're just left with v naught squared plus 2y1g. In other words, the speed at which it hits the ground is completely dictated by the speed at which you throw it and the height of the building, independent of the angle. But it's kind of a quirk of the kinematics from our current technology. So there's a popular question to ask you guys. You know, and th this will be recast in different versions. Sometimes it'll be like you have a fire hose. And you're squirting it at different angles. What you know? Can you contrast the speed at which the water hits the ground for different angles of shooting it? And the answer is, it always hits the ground at the same speed for the same mathematical reason as this. Um, I have a, a nicer explanation for it a little bit later in the course, but anyway, for now I just have to let the math speak for itself. But another example. Oh, here's the same. Here's the same problem without time. The solution without time is prettier. But anyway, let me go on. You can read that. Ah, here's a good question. The speed of a projectile when it reaches its maximum height is 0.47 times its speed at half of its max height. All right. At what angle is the projectile fired? I mean, on the face of it, this is a very frustrating question, and it stands in stark contrast to the one I started with, right? Or the problem in your homework, like that rocket problem. Yeah, it's a drag, I mean, it's a lot to it, but you kind of have the pieces, you can work it out step by step. This problem really requires you to kind of take a different approach, right? But the approach is fairly simple. First of all, one of the things you can work with is the x velocities the same throughout the motion. All right, so we know that the x is going to be equal to um, uh, v, 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 v two x to be v naught cosine theta. V one x is also v naught cosine theta. The x velocity is the same throughout the motion, so that's one thing I know. The other thing I know is that the y at position y at event one is one half of the y at event two, assuming I set y equal to zero down here. All right. What else do I know? At the top of the flight, I know Vy is zero. That's something else I know that I can use. Okay, so what do I what do I finally end up using here? 
timeless equation, right? So I know v2y is 0. I know v1y, well, it's not 0, right? But I also know that the, the difference, the, the, the change in y is h2 minus h1, right? OK, so what? So that tells me that v1y squared is equal to 2g h2 minus, wait a minute, how do I, do, how do I change that h1 to h2 over 2? Well, that was given. Right, h1 is half of the second height. So that, that removes h1 from this equation, and so then I get gh2. <laughs> but we know what gh2, we know what h2 is because we know it's v naught squared sine squared theta over 2g. All right, so that gives me this equation. So then what? I have to be able to use that piece of information I'm given that the what? The speed at the max height, it's 4.7 times the speed at half the height, right? And now I can do that. So v2 is 0.47 times v1. Why is, why is the speed slower at the top? Because gravity is more time to work on. Right, because gravity has reduced the y velocity, right? So you, you're always stuck with that x velocity. It's always there. You're always moving over at the same rate. But the y velocity drops to zero, and then it, it picks back up again as acceleration works its works its way on the motion. Okay, so then I square this, and um, what else do I know? Up here, I just learned that. Um, well, of course, v one squared is v one x squared plus v one y squared. But I know v one y squared in terms of sine squared theta, and I know v one x squared in terms of cosine squared theta. I believe. And the v-naughts cancel. And then I'm left with an equation in tangent, which I can solve, and that gives me the equation. I can tell you from personal experience, and I think this is one of the harder kinds of projectile motion questions you can ask. But if you really look at it, there's, there's no like secret other kinds of equations that I haven't told you about. It's just a combination of everything we've said, <coughs> you know, all working together to waste your time. I'm sorry, what am I saying? There's nothing more interesting than life than working physics homework. Am I right? No? Now, um, next class, we should have some time for your questions, all right? Thanks, guys.